Well, just before we came on air, I spoke to The Guardian editor, Alan Rusbridger, and I asked him first why he thought David Miranda shouldn't have been detained. Well, it's a very bizarre use of the uh, Terrorism Act to uh, elide terrorism with journalism. Well, it's except a... is it a bizarre use of the... I mean, the Home Secretary said a very short while ago, if it is believed that somebody has in their possession highly sensitive stolen information which could help terrorists, which could lead to a loss of life, then it's right that the police act. Well, it's, that's all highly speculative stuff and part material that she hasn't seen, so she's no idea what was in his kit bag. Uh, but it, what is peculiar about this particular schedule of the Terrorism Act is that it applies just to ports and airports uh, and it allows somebody to be detained for nine hours and all their material stolen. Uh, in, in a way that if, if it happened kit bag, in but the... But it's not unreasonable. It's not an unreasonable suspicion for the police to have, given the work that he was doing with Glenn Greenwald on the Snowden story, that he might have highly secretive very, very sensitive stolen data on him. It's, it's possible. Well, it, the, the use of stolen is a highly, uh, highly emotive word. It's, it's, leaked, it's leaked material which journalists are used to handling. Uh, and all I'm saying, uh, the reason why it has caused international surprise is that if this had happened in the Heathrow car park, uh, David Miranda would have been able to claim all kinds of protections around that kind of material and he would have been able to call for a lawyer immediately. Uh, and I think there's a oddity about the use of terrorism against people who are engaged in journalistic acts in which they have no protection, which is alarming to people. You revealed today that you had to allow or you did allow GCHQ officials into the Guardian offices to watch you destroy your own journalistic material related to this story. That seems to be an extraordinary move. Why it, did well, you take it? Was, it? it was an extraordinary moment uh, in which the UK government explicitly threatened prior restraint against The Guardian. So that would be impossible in America, First Amendment, no prior restraint. Uh, and we had the British government saying they were going to use legal methods to get us to either destroy or return the material. So rather than return the material to the government, I said we would destroy it in the knowledge that we already had copies in Brazil and in America. As I, I mean, the, the index government. of censorship say, yes, it's very disturbing that the government should pursue this move, but they seem to be equally disturbed by the fact that you agreed to it. Well, I, I think if you think through the, the options, uh, because I, I explained to the government in advance, we, we already have a copy in America and Brazil, so I'm not sure what is to be gained from destroying a copy in London. But it seemed to be uh, our duty to this material and to the public is to go on reporting. If we had agreed, uh, waited for the courts to come in, judges what, would have been in control of that information. Why didn't you take this fight for freedom of speech? journalists write for freedom of speech. Why didn't you take it to the courts? That's surprising to many people. Well, um, a, a, there's no guarantee that we would have won. And during the period, which could have been any time up to a year, 18 months in which we were fighting the courts, the judges would have been in control of Edward Snowden's material, not us. But and what about the principle? Because that's what's disturbing the index on censorship, for example. Well, there's no principle to be gained in a, in, a, in a battle in which you don't know what the outcome is going to be. And I'm not confident that the British courts would have protected The Guardian in the way that the American co courts have a history you, since the Pentagon Papers of protecting the American you, press. You, have you agreed to anything else with these senior Whitehall figures about material that you have or might have access to? We have no ongoing contact with them. But you, ha you had quite a lot of contact with them, it seems, and your critics might say that it all sounds if not cosy, then a little bit too close for well, comfort. Well, I would love you to ask the government whether you think The Guardian has been cosy towards this material. I don't think anyone would accuse us of that. I think there is, there is a, an area of responsibility when you're handling material like this to have a line of communication because it's very sensitive material. You talk about Edward Snowden there. I mean, what about your responsibility to Edward Snowden? Do you know where he is? Well, he's in Russia. Was that a wise move for him? You would have to ask him. I, I would, I would uh, presentationally, it doesn't look good for him to go to Russia, uh, but I don't know what his range of uh, options were. Do you not have more of a duty of care to him than that? I think we have an ongoing duty of responsibility to keep in touch with him and some duty of care, but he has taken decisions off his own bat, uh, and I know from talking to Glenn uh, that he has, I don't think he has any complaints about uh, the Guardian's handling of the material or our attitude towards him. Alan Rushbridge, thank you very much for coming in.